This is not a fun this conversation. This is a fun conversation. Okay? We're talking about gyms in L.A. Um, and I think that this is a good conversation because we can talk about, like... <laughs> well, yeah, okay, I can tell you a story. Because this morning I called... Because, like you said, there's L.A. Fitness or Equinox. That's your options. You either pay $40 a month or, like, $400 a month, and there's nothing in between. Because, okay, there's, like, three or four Planet Fitnesses in the city. Right. But they're all, like, an hour's drive away from me. They're all from in, my like, apartment. And they're all in weird and inconvenient suburbs. I mean, my, my old apartment, it was, like, right around the corner. It was right. great. Right. Uh but it, it's just not going to happen anymore. And so I'm looking for something else and you really can't beat, you know, 10 bucks a month. Right. So I'm finding, you know, LA fitness is the closest thing. And the one that's next to me apparently has no parking because of your alma mater. Mine. UCLA. Oh, I thought you were going to say DeVry. So I don't know, but I, I was calling around to some local gyms this morning and uh, there's some gym called B Shoys or something like that, or what? B Choys or something like that. I I looked it up online and um, there's a bunch of good reviews and it's a local place. He owns like two of them in the city, uh-huh. and it's this uh, world champion Egyptian guy, like. I don't know, but he he relocated to L.A. and opened two gyms or something. An but, Egyptian gym. But the phone that like the phone number that you call goes straight to him. Oh, so it's apparently it's like his like, actual. Phone. It's his cell phone or something <laughs> oh, shit. because he answered. He's like, "Wait, what's this about?" And I'm like, "I I, I got like I'm on." I was literally on, like, the Google Maps, like trying, and it brought me straight to his cell phone. I'm like, "That's probably not smart." But I said, "I'm looking for a gym." He's like. Oh yes, it's uh, it's forty nine ninety nine a month, and you have to pay first and last month, like like a fucking rent, like I'm renting an apartment, <laughs> and I'm just like, okay, thank you. Uh, that's well, that's you not know what happen. was scary was Anytime Fitness, which I didn't know this. They basically want you to pay two years up front, two years. So there was this like very energetic lesbian, very like buff, just like fifty, purple hair, didn't give a fuck. Like, energy, energy, energy. And she showed us the weights, and she walked us around, and then, you know, this is this, and you get a key card to log in, you can come in anytime you want, like, that's the whole point. And I'm like, oh, okay, there's a lot about this that I like, like, you have good equipment and everything. It's like, yeah, so it's, it's like $40 a month, and you have to pay the first two years in advance. And I'm like, I'm not paying $900 a person to join a gym. No one should. That's obscene. It seems like that's what... 24 hour fitnesses because I there's one in Santa Monica not far from me yeah. and I looked up the price and it said you can pay $22 a month but you have to pay $300 down <laughs> and I'm just like like a car wh- I, no <laughs> I'm not gonna do that like no because if I if I do that and I don't like it you're not going to give me that money back? No. It's, it, the problem is is that I think that this is another thing for this country. I think that gyms in a lot of ways exist to make people feel worse about themselves, but not like they want them to like make them feel worse about themselves in like an I'm going to get in shape way. They just make it so difficult to join or cancel or everything that they that people are just like, well, then I'm, I'm giving up. Like, I would rather just not work out than deal with another expensive obligation per month. I mean, Netflix and Hulu make it easy to cancel. Gyms don't. Some gyms still make you have to go in and write in person a reason why. Like, do you know how hard it was for me to cancel Planet Fitness after we moved away? And I changed the payment method, and I'm like, I, I'm not going. I'm not there. You can see I have not checked in in a month. I am physically not there. Still trying to go. Still trying to charge it. Still trying to charge it. And finally, my card's like, uh, this looks fraudulent. I'm like, it kind of is. Like, they just won't leave me alone. So I'm, I'm technically still paying for it. So yeah, I guess maybe I should ask you, do I have to, like, be in the Orange County? They said you have to go back to a Planet Fitness and quit in person. Anyone or the anyone. one that you are no, anyone, registered? Anyone. Anyone. But it's still, like, insane. That's still an insane process for right. something that's $10 a month. I think, you know, they've got fancy new versions of vet places and of mattress stores and of all the other businesses from the 80s and 90s that you would see crowding a downtown street. I am waiting for a new take on a gym where it literally is $20 a month. You come in. They have a very small group of people who work out there. It's not, you know, this huge list. 
and it's kind of like a members thing. The equipment's clean, the bathrooms are nice, individual stalls, you can go in there, go before work, change and go to work. And it's not Equinox, and it's not, I don't care if you have a spa, I don't need a restaurant, I just need a fucking weight rack. Like the one I go to in Studio City here is great. There's clearly deferred maintenance, and that's okay. Like no one uses a shower, that's fine, I don't need that. Some of the ceiling's missing, all right. But it's been around since like the 80s, and the equipment's good, and it's rarely, there, there's rarely more than eight or nine people in the entire thing. And that's all I need, because I'm never having to wait for, for equipment. So, it's a little more, it's more than I would like to spend, but it's the only option that I have. It's that or fucking Equinox that I'm not, I will, I refuse to go to. For a city that's so obsessed with how people look, you would think there would be more affordable and or, you know, okay gyms. It, it doesn't make any sense to me. Right. Like, are, are people really just getting the shit sucked out of them? Like, they don't actually go I to a think, gym? I, I really think that the fitness thing is over in the way that either you have a weird fitness hobby, like you do that Pilates or the barre or or some fighting or you sit on a rack and move around or like, you know, those class things like Barry's boot camp. Yeah. Either it's a group thing or you're on Ozempic. There's nothing in between. I think people have <laughs> Maybe literally I should get on that. <laughs> no. I think people have literally given up on just like the idea of you go and work out and feel better about yourself. Or I think that people who do go to the gym in a lot of ways just sit on the cardio for a little while and then they're like, okay, I'm done. Like, I think it really is getting to getting back to like it has to be a group thing. It's getting back to like the Slimmons studio, the Richard Simmons workout <laughs> studio. And the thing is, and I, I mean, I know the two people listening to this might care, so I'll just go ahead and say it anyway. Um, There's three. <laughs> I, I need I need that routine built back. Like, it's not even the fact that. I necessarily might enjoy going. It just gives me a more of a routine. Because it was a part it, of the day. Yeah. And it's nice that because of my work schedule, I, sh I can show up to work at 12.30, 1 o'clock. Right. So I can go to the gym at 10 when everyone else is at work. Well, and so, you know, it, it's a little bit less crowded. The right. traffic's You got the better. morning crowds done and the, the noon lunchtime crowd isn't there yet. But then again, in this city, that doesn't matter. There's no scheduling anymore. There's no nothing. People don't have to be at work at a Nobody certain works. time. Nobody works. Nobody does anything. Everyone just kind of just exists. And it's really weird because when you do work in this city and you have a job that you go to or you're working throughout the day, you notice how you notice the other people working and you notice the people who aren't. It's a very weird phenomenon. You notice the people who are sitting. Anyone sitting at a restaurant at 3 p.m. is not working. I'm sorry. That's a pretty good rule. Well, okay. I went to uh, the Century City Mall this morning. Mm -hmm. I showed up around ten forty-five and eleven o'clock when things were starting to open. Right. Dead. Yeah. Nobody in there. Yeah. Um, Dead. I left. I left probably around two thirty. Mm -hmm. It was still pretty empty. There are more people, but it was still pretty empty. And so I'm like, okay, maybe people do work because it's a Friday. Yeah. Uh, a Friday midday slash early afternoon. Well, it's also after tourist season. I mean, I think that this is, if I was a tourist or I'm advising tourists, I'd tell them to come this time of year because it's nice and warm during the day. It's cooler at night. You can enjoy patios. Like, this is a good time to visit. But it's after your traditional tourist season when you'd have Arab families of 30, you know, having their day of rage in the mall. I was about to say, but would they go to the mall? Are you kidding? That particular mall, yes, because yes. it's got they, everything. They have a Louis Vuitton. They're going to be there. If there's a Louis Vuitton, the Arab families will show up. It's like crack. Oh, okay. So I do. I guess I do have a story. And, and just on a side note, the other thing is that that mall is now the closest department stores to Beverly Hills. Because all the major... Mm. There's still a Saks that looks very sad by itself on Wilshire, but... Remember, Beverly Hills used to have Robinson May. It used to have Barney's. It used to have a lot of big department named stores, all of which have moved to the Century City Mall. So any of the big stores, like the Bloomingdale's and stuff like that, the only other Bloomingdale's, I think, is... I don't even know if there's one at the Beverly Center. So it's kind of its own thing. Uh, yeah, there is one. Okay. But uh, no one but likes the Beverly Center. Anymore. The Bloomingdale's at the Century City Mall is huge. And it has stores within it. Yeah. There's a Gucci store within the store. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and heavily guarded 
heavily guarded. Oh, after that incident? Uh, Did you see the, the entire thing. The entire oh, yeah. uh, Bloomingdale's was heavily guarded. There was a guarded. video of people trying to smash and grab at that Gucci outlet, because the Gucci's closest to the door, and that yes, door is, is closest to the... It's pretty close to the exit. You can get out of there pretty quick. Yeah. And after that, that embarrassment, and then making Westfield look bad, and their insurers and everything, it's probably like going to an embassy now. <laughs> it, it was it was pretty tight. Um, but I walked in to Bloomingdale's this morning, and... I'm running out of some cologne, and so I'm like, let me go see what, you know, the designers have to offer. Not that I can afford to buy anything, but let but me go check it yourself. out. So I walk over to Hermes. Of course. I'm well, I, The bright orange was calling my name. <laughs> so I walked over, and, and there was no one around, and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, this very, very kind black woman with a gap in her teeth <laughs> popped up and was like... Can I help you? Are you looking for someone or for yourself? And I'm like, scared the crap out of me. <laughs> because, well, I didn't see her. I didn't hear her. I didn't smell her. I didn't, uh, nothing. Smell her. Well, she works in a perfumery. <laughs> so, I, so she pops up and like scares the shit out of me. I'm like, uh, 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 and I'm, I'm stumbling because I'm like, I don't know what to say, like to get her to leave me alone. And of course I was like, oh, I'm just browsing. And she goes, well, let me show you something. And she like, kind of grabs my hand and, like, brings me over to the Bulgari station, where clearly they have too much of something, and she's trying to push it. Offload, offload, offload. But apparently she probably also makes commission. And so she, like, takes my hand, sprays my wrist, and she's like, this is going to smell wonderful on you. I can just tell it. And she's right. It did. It, it was amazing, and I would love to buy some. But I was like, and, and how much is it? And it's a big bottle. I'll give them that. She goes, oh, this is just $400. <laughs> And I'm like, ma'am, <laughs> my car payment is less than $400. <laughs> and so I was just like, oh, okay, wow. And, and I, we kept talking. She goes, well, I know you're just going to come back. So here, take a sample. And she gave me like two little little, little vials, which are probably like 50 bucks I was going to say, make those last. Um, so, you know, I have something <laughs> for next time I go out on the town or something. But... You're going to be there with a little pipette and eyedropper. You're going you're gonna to make that last. There was no one else in this Bloomingdale's hardly. And so she was all over me trying to make a sale. And I'm just like, wow. you, like, you see her. how I'm dressed. I'm not, I'm not buying anything at this place. My old roommate used to work at the um, Chanel counter, the makeup counter at that Bloomingdale's. And she would tell me the stories of the Persian ladies who would come in. With a makeup compact, like a Chanel powder, which is expensive. That's about the most expensive makeup you can buy. Well, yeah. And they'd come back with it empty and say, oh, I, I didn't like it. I want store credit, store credit, store credit. I'm a Bloomingdale's Rewards member. I'm a Bloom... And these, these Persian women would buffalo her into getting store credit and money back and cash back. They kept trying to do cash back. And then finally they banned that policy. Like, you can't go back and get cash back for, for used cosmetics. And, oh no, the color don't look good on my skin. Oh, honey, 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 honey. Like, just berate. She's like, she would come back from work just exhausted. She'd be like, I had to deal with all of these women today, and they come in packs. She's like, there'll be the mother, there's the grandmother, there's the aunt, there's the sister, there's the daughter. They come in like packs of five or six, all Mercedes in the parking lot, and just, they just. So, in essence, they'll spend hundreds and thousands of dollars. And then get hundreds of thousands of dollars in refunds, use the product, or return merchandise and clothes that are, like, stained, basically. And because Bloomingdale's, like Nordstrom's, is a very generous policy, although probably less so now, they would basically get all this stuff for free. And it would be like a sport. So that Bloomingdale's has seen a lot of shit. I'm sure. But it, it's still really nice, though. It's a nice that one. They've, yeah. It's one of their best. I think it's one of their best Bloomingdale's. That entire mall, though, is spotless. Oh, yeah. It's, like, militantly clean. I mean, I was I was shocked and, and pleasantly, like, pleasantly it make, surprised. It makes Fashion Island or South Coast Plaza look, like, sloppy, by comparison. And, uh, again, no one cares about this, but for what it's worth, the parking is not outrageous. Like, it's, um, yeah. I was there for two and a half hours, and it was eight bucks. I mean, okay. Why don't you pay to park there? You could walk there. Because I didn't know that I was going to go at first, oh. and then... I also knew that I was going to buy a few products, uh, shower products. Oh, so. did you go to Lush? Yeah. Okay. 
Well, um, but we probably should talk about something political. Uh, so and, I and overheard war. No, I'm kidding. Go ahead. I overheard um, while I was having lunch at Zinke or something like oh, yeah. that. Um, the one in West Hollywood, or was there one at the Century no, City? No, at the Century Mall? City Mall. Oh, I didn't know there was one there, too. Um, a lovely bon, pork banh mi sandwich. It was, yeah. it was delicious. Um, <laughs> but the guys next to me were talking politics. Oh, shit. And they were clearly conservative. Oh. Um, very straight men. Businessmen, probably. Businessmen doing business. But they were talking about the speaker shit. So, um... Yeah. Well, you know, Reagan used to have his office in Century City. His last office was at the top of the Fox Tower. The one, the Nakatomi Plaza Tower from Die Hard. No. That was his final office for the rest of his life, because he lived right up the road in Bel Air. So he'd just go up and down Beverly Glen to work, and he'd sit there and play with jelly beans or whatever. Uh, well, it's true. Um... But they were talking about the speaker thing, which I, again... I have been less engaged on Twitter than usual, but I, I get the highlights, and it sounds like you have Scalise and Jim Jordan, you know, kind of fighting for it. And the last thing I heard was that Scalise now stepped down, and they're trying to get around Jim Jordan. That's all that I know. I think because Scalise... I don't think there's going to be a speaker by the time this thing comes out. By no. Way. No, I don't think so either. And But apparently Scalise um, has pissed off a lot of people. Uh, yeah. in, in various ways. So I kind of also want to highlight that David French. I need a soundboard just so I can make like really bad noises. Every time wah, wah, wah. <laughs> exactly. Um, <laughs> every time you summon him. Um, I was, li- I was listening to him commentate, uh, on, on a podcast about this, uh, just this morning. Um, I don't I don't understand how he can go this David French can go from saying something that I'm just like yes finally something I agree with you on something you sound smart about and then 2 minutes later opening his mouth and just saying something that makes me so livid he starts talking about um you know the the freedom caucus basically in in the House of Representatives and refers to people like, you know, Matt Gates and, and Bobert and all of these people, Nancy Mace, right. as quote, some of the worst people in this entire country. Like like what? like personally attacking them. Like what? not like Damn I don't man. care I don't care for their uh, you know, opinions or their stances or whatever. Like literally saying these are some of the worst people alive in our country. Oh my God. And I'm like you're by extension the because what they believe is what a lot of, you know, the MAGA base believes. By extension, you're calling a lot of people in this country the worst people of this country. Right. That, where does he think that that's going to get him any kind of brownie points? With like, I just, I, but I'm I think baffled. that he has, he has this thing where it's almost like a tick where he has to throw some like, some bait for leftists to still pay attention to him. I genuinely feel like that's... Well, the, he works at the New York Times now. So. Exactly. He got a gig somehow. And I think that he just has almost this tick where he has to be like, come on, invite me to the cocktail party still, right? Like, right? I agree with you. It's sad and kind of bleak, but it is what it is. And, uh, but so the, the thing that I did agree with him on, and this kind of shifts the topic a little bit, um, but we talked about it last time. He said basically in this country... Well, no, in the world, if you are not, sorry, let me get this right. If you are anti-Zionist, you are also anti-Semitic at this point. Right. At one point, that was not the case. But at this mm-hmm. point, after, you know, wars broken out, atrocities have been committed, if you are not, you know, a pro-Israel or or as he said, pro-Zionist, you are anti-Semitic. Is he telling that to Jews who are also anti-Zionist? I guess so. That's interesting. An (laughs) anti-Semitic Jew. I I mean, I can understand where he's coming from in that that scenario because, you know, some of the BLM shit that was put out this week. Right. You know, 
praising Hamas. But they're openly or, anti-Semitic. <laughs> like they're not, they're not just like they right, don't they even try to it. they yeah. don't even try to pass like we're anti-Zionist. <laughs> like they're legitimately anti- anti-Semitic. Right, but it, it's now in the in the front of everyone. Like yeah. Before the, the liberals who didn't do their due diligence in in reading the dogma of these groups and just blindly saying, "Oh yeah, Black Lives Matter," they had no idea. They had right. no idea they were communists. They had no idea they were anti-Semitic. All of this stuff. Now, <laughs> now it's kind of shoved in their face, and they're like, "Oh well, uh, I guess we shouldn't support him anymore." Well, no shit. Well, and I think that the hard part too is that so many people have been exposing these groups for years and years and years. And now it's finally like, oh, this is who they are. Like, the, I, I love the very slow sort of walk, and you see a lot of these progressive people kind of twisting themselves in these pretzel shapes of just like, well, I mean, the attack wasn't justified, but the reaction is also not justified, but they cut off the water, but then this, but then the babies, but then, and it's just this like darting back and forth, and you're like, you, you're making this a lot harder for yourself than you need to. Yes. But. But. I mean, do you do you agree with the sentiment that if you are if you are now anti Zionist, you are anti Semitic? I don't like that sentiment of now. I think that there's been a pretty clear I think that's been a pretty clear thing for a long time. But I also know that there's many people who are Jewish who are very against the actions of Israel, and I would not call them anti Semitic. Or self hating or any of these other terms. <laughs> I don't think that they're right, but I also don't think that they're anti Semitic. That's just retarded. Well, yeah, I, I do. I do find it baffling that there are videos of actual rabbis, like with Palestinian flags, waving them. Uh, that's well, bizarre to me. But there's different. There's always there's there's a lid for every pot. <laughs> I guess so. Um, okay, last sort of thing that I wanted to ask you about. Yeah. Cancel culture. Oh. Big word. I, so apparently there's a story because of this um, Hamas and, and, and the Israeli war that's broken out. Yeah. Um, some law, law school students have put out very baffling statements, not baffling to them, but the pro-Palestinian sentiments. Mm-hmm. That are very, very, very strongly worded. Okay. And I could, I could go and find the one, but uh, apparently the student bar uh, group of, of Harvard put out one. Oh. Uh, there was an. Uh, who asked another, them? Who, who, I know. Who like, gives a like, shit? I, I was. I really wanted to have a, a hot take on the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, but I was just waiting for the Harvard Law Review to tell me what to think. But. One of them, who again is the president of one of these student bar organizations, yeah. which is basically like the student body president of a law school, like right. a very, you know, top of the class student. He put out a statement and has since lost his job, oh. lost his prospective job with a very, very wealthy and, and high rolling uh, law firm because of the statement that he put out. And so, for me, I'm laughing, going, ha-ha, you deserve this. But then it got me thinking, I don't laugh at it when it's on our side. You know what I mean? Like, I'm trying to, I'm trying to rationalize within my own brain, like, am I being a hypocrite by championing, championing this type of cancel culture and not the other one. You know what I'm saying? Like no, someone, a, someone else getting fired for saying something conservative. That's a very good point. And so he's saying he lost a prospective job. It was not one that he had, but one that he could have had. Oh, no, he had the offer letter and they rescinded it because of the statement that he put Okay, out. then I don't, then I think that that's fair. I think if it was an actual job where he had employment and it was secured and he was, he was making money from it already, then we have a different moral quandary. But I think that an offer letter can be rescinded if somebody doesn't all of a sudden match the ethics of your organization. And I would feel uncomfortable if I was Jewish and I had a law firm that I wanted to hire this person. And then they come in like this sort of like raving, raging pro-Palestinian thing after like days when the bodies are still cold or, you know, not even cold yet. Like that's, that's, that seems like a bit much. 
you know, I guess in the same way it'd be like after September 11th here, if someone was like, the terrorists were right, and then, you know, make sure I get that job. And it's like, well, okay, well, that's, now we're, we're getting into some pretty bad territory here. I know, but I, I still sit back and think, I feel, I feel like they made the right decision, but if the shoe were on the other foot, hmm. how would, how would I react? I don't know. Poorly. I <laughs> I'm trying to make a, a, I guess a moral distinction of, there's a huge difference between saying, oh, I'm, I'm. I support Trump uh, for being, you know, uh, the presidential nominee or something like that and getting fired for that over saying that's that's also I, true. I, I, I support the the war efforts going on and the terrorist attacks going on. That's that's true. One of them is issuing a political preference like the people that, you know, like Lady Maga and stuff like that, who have lost jobs for just saying right. this is my political preference versus somebody openly supporting terrorism. That's a pretty. It's a pretty big difference, yes. Yeah. Now, other people would not think so. They'd be like, well, if you're supporting Trump, then you're a terrorist, and that's just fucking stupid. Yeah. But... I don't know. It's it's still something... Because it's still technically both considered cancel culture, if you if you want to put a label on it, so... But cancel culture also, it's a couple things. I think that cancel culture is not... There should be... The, the, the response to cancel culture should not be, and I don't think it isn't, there is no consequences to any of your statements... In, in the real world. I think that cancel culture is this idea that people not only can't have a job, but can't even participate in polite society because of their personally held beliefs, which were considered 50, 50 in this country up until a few years ago. That's where I think it becomes cancel culture because it's like now you lose your job and you lose your bank and you lose half of your friends and you, your community is protesting in front of your house. Like that's what, I think being canceled is. Yeah. It also brings up the fact that this guy thought he would be protected in putting out a statement like that. Like, Oh, I think this so. is the, no, he absolutely did. Oh yeah. I but genuinely is... think that he thought that an, an Arab law firm or something like that would, it would hire him right away because of that. Or he would get under some, you know, some judges, you know, tutelage because of that. But this is the danger that universities and, by extension, law schools are putting us in and putting their students in because they're such an echo chamber of this filth and this anti-Americanism and and anti-Westernism, if you will, that... It's anti a lot. Well, yeah, I, I could I could go on, but I digress. Um there's such echo chambers for that crap and they they they're so shocked when they get don't act shocked right they they're so shocked when they get pushback on saying something absolutely deplorable well because you have teachers and you have professors that sort of shove this in the students faces because that's probably the only environment that they feel comfortable doing that in i mean now it's it's just sort of accepted but a lot of, that's why none of these things surprise me. Antifa and BLM and everything like that. If you've ever been to a public university or, or certain private universities, you've seen it. And you're like, that could never happen in the real world. And it has. It's all of these insane ideas have leaked out into the real world. And it's all under the guise of, we have figured it out. We are smarter than you. And this is the way that you should live. And it's so anti-humanity in the way that people, it, it really is because you create these, these insane constructs that they expect people to live by. And then, you know, trying to control them with, with language and bending and twisting what language actually means. The scientific method is out the window and, you know, ethics are out the window and it just becomes this, this very, this, this almost Hieronymus Bosch painting. And I'm seeing, I'm seeing things pop up more and more even in the high school arena because I'm I'm working with high school students right now in my job. Right. And one of them, she's taking a Spanish class and she has a bunch of online assignments. I was helping her with them. And it was like a vocabulary assignment and she does all the work and then we get down to the last part of the assignment and it says the vocabulary lesson was on media, right? Mm -hmm. So newspapers, etc. 
and the last part of the assignment says, uh, around the world in many co- in many Western countries, uh, the media can be seen to have severe bias and can, has even been called fake news. Uh, please write a paragraph in English for a Spanish class, but please write a paragraph in English about an issue that two sides of the media in your country are biased about. <laughs> and I'm thinking, number one, what does this have to do with Spanish? Right. Why are you asking them to write it in English? Why are you asking them to write it at all? Where, what, don't, what happened to Donde Esta La Biblioteca? <laughs> These people still don't know where the library is, and yet they're trying to ask him about, about media bias in this country? But they have to write it in, like, they get to write it in English. Like, this oh is not even, God. it has nothing to do with the Spanish language, culture, anything. And I'm just like, we really have infected every aspect of education. Yeah, and it, it really is something where if, 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 if foreign language isn't left alone, then I think that the last bastion that they want to come for is math and science. And you're already starting to see it in a lot of ways. Well, yeah. And that's, that's when it's like, when you actually go to the most, you know, UCLA was set up for most logical to least logical. So like at one end you had theater and poli sci and writing and stuff like that. Like your least people. logical. Your people too. And at the far end you had... Math, science, you know, you had neuro- neuroscience, like medical, and then math and science, which was its own, like, just very, like, you know, the people who don't like daylight, we kind of call them, because they just, like, hide inside these windowless buildings, and they just create nuclear reactors and, and jets, and we just leave them alone, let them do what they need to do. Clone animals, shit. Exactly. Like, there's there's some, you know, whatever the fuck happens there. There's probably some clone of you walking around somewhere. Oh, wouldn't that be every, wouldn't that be in everybody's best interest? No. Um... So yeah, so there's there's that, and then it's like okay, mm-hmm. these sciences do not lend themselves to having any bias because they're dealing with logical constructs. So I think the only way that they're trying to affect them now is with admissions, and they're like, well, we want less of these people and less Asians and less people like that, and it's like okay, if you, that's how you want to try to wreck it from within, good luck because now. It's been ruled that most of those affirmative action things don't even exist anymore. Like, it's done. Yeah. Well. Well. As I said many times, we should burn down the education system and start over. And. And? The Department of Education can go fuck itself. Oh, okay. 